Welcome back everyone to another video. Today we're going to look at a game between Hikaru and Victor Mikhailski and you're going to see why in this game Hikaru is the top level GM that he is. So we start the game with Knight of 3, Knight of 6. So it's a ready opening where you bring the knights out first, but instead we're going to quickly transition here to a English opening. And this is the English Anglo-Indian Anglo-Grunfeld defense where basically black strikes at the center. I don't know theory, but that's just what the opening is. And then Hikaru quickly plays this move, Queen A4. So he's inducing one of these moves because he wants to defend this pawn with his queen for for some reason instead. So he slides back, we get takes takes, and now his queen has a lot of pressure here out in the open. We get the move knight c6, Hikaru takes the center with d4, we get bishop g7, we're going to fianchetto and castle here, and then we get e4 and does what any beginner should do and take two pawns in the center if you're able. He has a lot of pressure here because the only thing that are attacking these are the knights right now. So we get castles and then we get an early e5. Victor counteracts that with bishop e6, where he's attacking the queen, so you can't take the knight, eh, otherwise you lose the queen. So of course, Hikaru takes the knight, and loses his queen in the process. So he loses the queen, Hikaru gets two pieces, but you're going to see here, the king has to take, because otherwise if you do something like this, you're going to take with check, and then you're actually going to be up material. So the king takes, Hikaru takes the bishop, and he now has a disadvantage. He's down one point of material, and he does not have a queen going into an endgame. So when you're going into an endgame without a queen, you're losing. You want to try and keep as many pieces as you can on the board. So of course, Hikaru trades more things. So he's now down two points of material without of queen, and he's going to have to try and defend himself and convert to a winning endgame. But we all know Hikaru. He is one of the best defenders at chess. And of course, you're going to see that happen. So we get bishop slide back here, protect the king. Queen slides over, putting pressure here, putting pressure. Oops, sorry. Pressure here, pressure here. We get castle, so Hikaru is now safe. Rook here, he's going to try and double his rooks here and put a lot of pressure on the second and first rank. So we get bishop, uh, rook b1, sorry, defending this pawn. We get rook here, going to try and double the rooks. We get b3, defending everything. King slides up for some reason. And then we get knight a4 on the side of the board, putting going to put some pressure here and moving the knight to a better square. We get double the rooks, and then we get this move a3, kicking the queen out. So the queen slides over here to e4, attacking this bishop, and then we defend by blocking it with our other bishop and simultaneously defending our king here. So we get this move b6, defending everything. We don't want this bishop to be active along this diagonal. Knight slides over, trying to kick the queen out. Queen attacks. Rook defends on c1 from Hikaru, and then the rook gets in on the second rank. So if you're able to, it is very good to get your rooks here to either the second or the seventh rank here on both sides of the board, because it can be very powerful, powerful, sorry, and you can win a lot of material in your games, especially at early levels. But it's very good, especially you get two. It's called doubled pigs on the seventh, I believe is what people call it, where you get two rooks here, and they're basically just an unstoppable force. So we get the move rookie two, defending everything, so all the pieces are now defended. We get c5 from Victor. He's defending this pawn chain from this bishop. It basically has no power along this diagonal. So the, this bishop slides up now. It can become useful. It puts pressure on the f7 square. And then we get rook up here. So he's threatening to take and win this knight. So Hikaru slides his bishop over here, cutting the king off and attacking the queen. So you can't take now. Otherwise, you lose your queen. And then, of course, we get the move queen h5, attacking the queen. But he actually gives up the rook now. So we're actually back to equal material. And Hikaru now has a plus 0.3 advantage. He is now winning again after being down a queen and down two points of material. So that we get this move e6, trying to defend everything, cut this bishop up. Uh, we get a3, sorry, a4, cutting anything from pushing here and attacking the bishop. And then we get rook d2. We're going to try and infiltrate and win some pawns here along the back rank. So knight slides over, defending this and attacking the rook. Rook slides up, attacking. This rook slides up to c3. He's going to try and get in here and put pressure. Queen slides over and basically induces what Hikaru was going to do here already. So the queen has to slide all the way back, which wasn't totally totally accurate. But this knight now jumps in, and then Victor makes a huge mistake here and blunders the whole game. He plays f5. He gives up this pawn totally, and so Hikaru takes with the knight. You don't want to take with the bishop right away, because it's better to take the knight. You're threatening discovery check, potentially taking some pawns on the way out. So he takes with the knight, and then Victor decides to sacrifice the other rook for another bishop, which to wasn't totally accurate, but now Hikaru is up three points of material in the endgame with a plus five advantage after being down a queen and down two points of material in a losing position. So of course the queen has to now make counterplay. He's going to try and come in and win all these pawns here and maybe give a checkmate if Hikaru is not careful. So we get h4 attacking the side. He's going to try and rip open the side. Queen slides in. We get rook here, doubled rooks. Queen over, he's going to try and win some of these pawns here, and he's going to, it's now guaranteed. So the knight slides here, and Victor gets a little too greedy. 
He takes the pawn. It is now mate and four. Try and find it if you can. And if you can't, we get check. King there, check. And the mate and four is actually with the queen blocks. You take with the rook. So we get queen blocks, takes, king over here, and then this is mate. But that did not happen. Instead, he walked his king forward, and instead it is now mate and one with the knight. And Hikaru wins the game. And that was a great game, and that is why Hikaru is one of the top-level GMs that he is. He sacrificed the queen for three pieces, was down two points of material in a losing endgame, and somehow converted it to a checkmate position. I hope you enjoyed. Check out my other videos. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.